Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the second day of 2024, so Happy New Year, everyone. Yay! So today we have myself, Damien Duportal, Stéphane Merle, and Bruno Verharten. Uh, Hervé is off this week. Uh, I, I think Kevin is not available, and Mark might join us later. Let's get started. So the weekly release 2.438 was released last week without any problem. Uh, Mark and I worked on publishing the tags and it has been deployed to InfraCI as everyone was in holidays. Hey, Christmas holidays. Uh, so no problem. And this week, uh, the new weekly release, at least the war packages and Docker images has been pushed. I believe the change log might be pushed only tomorrow if Kevin is not available today. Eventually, Mark or Tim might take care of that. On the infrastructure, Stefan, it means you are ready to roll uh, to deploy it on InfraCI as soon as you want. You mean the tag has been, uh, the, the image has been published too? Yes. Cool. Um, don't forget there will be a plugin, a major plugin change. Let me think, uh, speak about that later. Uh, the, you have a pull request on each of the two Docker images about the coverage plugin. So please only deploy InfraCI once you will have uh, merge my pull requests. Be, you can merge them before or after the, the core changes on weekly, no problem. But you, you will need to deploy this too. It's a deprecated plugin changed by the new plugin, replacing it. Uh, just a point on billing status. So um, December was 7.35K, so just a bit more, but just a few bucks as December. So we we were we were way below our, our goal for 2023. So congratulations, everyone. That's a nice job. Uh, and this week for now, the forecast is still uh, unreliable because it's only been two days, but the forecast should be less than 7K for this month due to the sponsorship work with it. The sponsorship on itself, we almost reached the milestone of the first thousand dollars consumed. Uh, just to give you an order of magnitude, we have 40K on the sponsorship. So these are credits given by Azure and we consume on this one. So we will have uh, 1K almost for the 40K. So that's way more than what we decreased on Azure, of course, because as a reminder, this is a non-spot instances. Stefan and I requested the upgraded quota for spot instances earlier today. So let's cross finger that you'll allow us to use more credits. AWS, uh, a bit less than the previous months. We were below the 9K, uh, thanks for the wall, uh, the wall board, uh, particularly Bazel, uh, because by working on BOM builds and only building the needed BOM builds, we were able to decrease almost 1K. So thanks for that huge effort, folks. Uh, the current consumption is at 0.3k, so same rate as Azure. Uh, forecast is at 8.2, even though same forecast of two days on a 31 days month is unreliable. Digital Ascent, we have uh, enough for the next two weeks at the current rates. Uh, we have discussed with Digital Ocean. I'll update later, but they should apply the credits, the, the 20k new credits for this year later today or tomorrow. So we should be safe on that area, which means we should be able to handle our current workload and even increase some usages in the future. So that's good news. As uh, order of magnitude, we have consumed $38 for the first two days of January. Is there any question on the announcements? Nope, okay. Uh, next week, we'll see each other, so no cancellation of the meetings. So I will be there to drive it. So no need for someone to take over. So I believe we can check the upcoming calendar. Okay, for everyone. So that means we should be able to release the um, 440. Oh, that's too much numbers. Uh, next week, next Tuesday. 
I don't remember don't remember when is the next LTS as usual. I believe we should check on the Jenkins websites because we missed, we have to be careful, we missed one LTS release uh, last month, so I prefer checking. Jenkins LTS calendar. Are, this is the, the release candidate next week, but. Oh, cool. See the event calendar, here we are. Next week, did you say? 10 of January, the release candidate, the cool. chosen for the next LTS. Let me add the link for next time. I think the next the next LTS will be the 24th January with the 2.426.3. Next LTS, 2.3. Sorry, 2.426.3, 4 2.6.3, 24th January. Cool, thanks. 24, 24. Oh, 24, sorry. The 23, 24 is hard for, for the whole month of January, of course, <laughs> due to the, because we were in 2024, 23, oh, and we just yeah. changed 24. Yes, yes. Thanks. So nothing for the infrastructure next week. We will have to be careful the 24th. Is there anything on the security area? No. Nice. So no security release. And next major event will be the first them. With one, two, three, four, February. February 2020, Brussels. Um, is there any other major event, calendar, or item you want to discuss or mention? Or oh. okay. So let's get started on the issues marked as done. Uh, not the replace co code coverage. I had to reopen it. Sorry. Uh, we were able to finish moving all the, the ephemeral workloads to the new sponsor chip credits. Um, as we mentioned on the, earlier on the billing status, we have consumed almost 1K. And if we look, I've added on the issue a few screenshots about how much we decreased. So as you can see, uh, we don't consume anything else for the agent of infra CI of CI Jenkins IO, infra CI virtual machines, CI Jenkins IO, whatever, uh, trusted and third CI. Uh, so we have moved enough of the workloads. In the future, we can start working on a new issue and start uh, a plan for moving or creating new clusters for CI Jenkins IO, infra CI, and eventually release CI on that new sponsorship. However, that's a subsequent topic that should uh, arrive after land after the IRM64 changes that Stefan is working on. So, but now we started to consume, and then we will we will detect month by month or weeks by weeks, depending on uh, the consumption rate. Is there any question? Uh, we had two issues not planned and closed as not planned because two users ask a question and never answer when we give them directions. So closed. Now I, 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 I'm going to take the issues on the order. I have them here because priority is not easy. And I propose we specify priority on the new milestone then. Is that okay for everyone? So for each of the, it, the items we are going to cover there, when we are doing a status and we say if we are going to work on it on the next milestone or if we have to postpone. Okay, for everyone. Let's get started with a quick one that should be closed today. Uh, the, the goal is to replace the, dep the now deprecated plugin code coverage API by coverage. So uh, that was opened by Alex, thanks. And 
it has been done. I did it on the CI Jenkins IO and checked on trusted and cert. But I, I closed it last week, but I forgot that it's also on release CI and infra CI. The pull request has been open, as you can see on my screen. So now, since Stefan has to update at least in Press CI with the new uh, update, if it's okay for you, Stefan, to take care of this yes. uh, at the same time, go. so one restart only for both plugin and core and sample release. Yeah. Okay for you? Perfect. Okay, I'm assigning the issue for you since you are the the taskmaster for the plugin updates. Okay for you? Perfect. Okay, let's remove myself. And that means you can close that issue once the new once you you stop seeing that message and you stop seeing the code coverage plugin. That might we might need to uninstall, even though with Kubernetes there is an automatic uninstall if the plugin is not provided on config as code. So that might or might not work, but worst case it's uninstall and restart. Okay. Any question? Okay, so that issue is going to the next milestone. If you need help, don't, do not hesitate. Next issue, CI Jenkins IO install coverage page extension plugin. I want to move this one as the last because I want Mark to be there. Uh, if he's not there, we will delay uh, of one week. Crawler build fail. Uh, thanks, uh, Alex. Alex cooked that the crawler was failing since 22 of December. The crawler is a job that's which role is to aggregate a set of metadata when running and publish the resulting JSON file, sign it if it's on the trusted environment and deploy it to the update center. Then each of your Jenkins instance retrieve that signed JSON file and know how to install what we call Jenkins tools, such as JDK, Maven installation and stuff. The job in charge of this was publishing to the current update center, but failed to publish to the currently work in progress new update center. It was failing with a five, four or three error. I initially did a mistake and thought it was caused by the recent AZ copy to Blob Xfair credential changes uh, that uh, Hervé was working on before Christmas. That's my mistake because it there were unrelated change. I then thought it was uh, uh, my fault because uh, I changed the network rules of the trusted CI agents when moving to the new sponsorship system. However, earlier today, while diagnosing this, I, re I discovered that the, that SA is available publicly. So that rules out the, the IP of the agents. Finally, it was just a simple error. As you can see, we wrote the expiry date and it was the day before the the day of the nice uh, nest point. so that means uh, we have to update it that part is fixed there is also an error on aws that i, I haven't diagnosed yet but at least az copy now works uh, i've reported an update center issue which is related to that new system and so there are in order to close that issue, we need to fix the AWS free S3 error and add a calendar event for the next rotation. Or, or an added everyone? CLI. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, in that case, it's only, uh, yeah, that can be updated easily. So yeah, good idea. You seem eager to do an update CLI. Do you want to, to try with me? I don't remember, but the, the day we wrote that expiry, that expiry Date, I said we would better put that on the calendar or doing an update CLI, mm -hmm. and I should have done that. Look what I'm doing. We will pair on this. Of, of course, I should shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a shell script. That should be okay. Uh, we will. That should be quick. Um, so that one is almost there, but will be worked on for the next milestone. 
And if, if I, I remember, remember correctly, problem, we did that twice. There is two expiry dates on, in two files. Six, six or six now. <laughs> but you're, you're you're absolutely correct. But uh, yeah, for now we were using only uh, calendar events. Uh, next issue, unless there is a question. Next issue, uh, some builds on CI Jenkins IO using GDK 21 have out of memory errors. Uh, I wasn't able to understand uh, where does it come from? It's really weird. Sounds like it's something inside the builds. I don't understand that part. Uh, something to check eventually will be what kind of agent is used and maybe this agent need more memory, but that, that's really weird. Uh, at first sight, yeah, it, ne it needs a bit more diagnose. I've added some link. We need to work on this. I don't know the priority and if it's a blocker or not. So right now I consider this, um, I'm moving this to the milestone, but that's low priority at first. Not sure what is the issue here. Need specific Maven. Java Jenkins skills first site low priority. We need help to diagnose. Let's keep it. Let, let me take note. I need you to, to help me take note, folks, please. <laughs> Let's keep it on current milestone at low priority unless arg argument added to make it more important. Um, done on ci.g trusted and cert. Need to do it for infra.ci and release. Uh, crawler build fail. Has the copy fixed? Expiry date of the SAS token. To do fix AWS. To do add update CLI to remind us and update and SML. Thanks. Uh, next, oh, that one is closed. Uh, Christian, who will be the next LTS release lead, need access to release CI Jenkins IO, which implies first access to the VPN which they did. And also the proper authorization set uh, on the LDAP to allow authenticated, authenticating on release CI and being able to build and cancel jobs. That has been done. Uh, so I've closed the issue and I can move it to the down issues. Is there any question on that part? Okay. Next one is declarative pipeline migration assistant plugin no longer compiles. Hmm. I have no idea what this issue is. So let's open it and discover all together so we can try it. Oh, I remember. Okay. And Mark volunteer on doing the upgrades. Oh, that should be closable then. It has been merged. Okay, so we can close it. Is there any objection? If we misunderstood or miss something, please reopen with a pointer. 
So that issue is closed. Yay. I love the smell of closed issue in the morning. Um, yes, closed issue. <laughs> Sorry, That's... I'm a kid. Uh, Gigit cloning not converting and lines on Windows. So a second contributor confirmed that they see a difference when a container agent is used, meaning ACI agent, Azure Container uh, Instance agent, versus using Azure Virtual Machine agent. That could be our Packer image, which could have different setting than the, uh, the ACI Docker images, or that could be the plugin in charge of spinning up the agent and setting environment on the agent process that still had to be to be changed. But at least that, that's a confirmation there is something uh, that could be done on the infra level. Uh, last meeting, Mark said that he was taking care of this one. I believe it's assigned to him. So we will move that issue to the next milestone and we'll check with Mark. Next week, if Mark didn't have time, we will have to put our hands dirty on this one, even though it doesn't look like it's priority. Because as uh, James said, yeah, that's also up to the developer to change the online on all files of their repository. That's, so that is not blocking, it's just not inconvenient. Uh, let's, so moving to next milestone, still assigned to Mark Wait. Note, um, a second contributor confirm seeing difference between Windows container agent and Windows VM agents. Could be related to agent setup, to infra agent setup. Let me know if I'm capturing and if it's clear for you and if I'm capturing well what we said. Or plugin setting up the agent or Jigit itself. Okay. Uh, is there any question on the Jiggly cloning not converting line ends? No, okay. Next issue, remove G-Center OSS on a type from public virtual repo. So it has been confirmed uh, by Mark directly to GFrog that we saw a decrease in the bandwidth and on the usage. So the goal is met. This issue is not closed yet because we want to confirm in one or two weeks. So I will let Mark take care of closing uh, once it's okay because he is the person dealing with GFrog and communicating on that part. And also I still have an action on my side. Uh, I need to remove the OSS on the type cache from the public access, just to be sure that no one tried to reach it directly. Is there any question? Let's wait for Mark to confirm we keep having on with decrease as shown around Christmas and shared with Shifrog. One last item for, hello Mark. Hello Damien. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, excuse my tardiness. No problem. You're coming right, right. at a good time. This is writing that is waiting for you. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, what, am I, what do I need to be doing? Um, just to confirm on the removing G-Center and Sonai type repositories from Artifactory, I believe we were able to see an improvement one or two weeks ago based on the logs you retrieve from GFrog. Yes. Um, I still have to remove, that's one last configure, minor configuration item. I need to remove Sonatype cache from public access. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that's a minor item. And then that means you will be the master of closing or keeping it open until we are sure we have a bandwidth decrease. And I think we can close it. We did, we did have one very nice outcome of this mm -hmm. um, that a, a Jenkins contributor detected a problem library that we had placed in orphans and proposed a change to Jenkins core to upgrade to a newer version. So it's no, so it's now provided by Maven central. And nice. I was, I was frightened to touch that particular library because it's the uh, Java implementation of OpenBSD Bcrypt and crypto cryptography is not a thing I touch willingly, right? That's, that's, I'm, I think experts should do that. But in this case, they did the analysis and multiple people did the analysis and saw that there were no Java changes, no Java changes between the version we used originally, ancient thing from 2016, and the release that is available in Maven Central from 2021. So big positive, somebody, several people did the analysis and we're good to go. It'll be, it is already in the 2.439 weekly. And thus nice. we'll be in the next LTS baseline in February. Oh yes, good. Uh, 24th good. January, the next LTS. No, no oh, baseline, in, you're right. Right, right, different phrasing, right? So it, we're not, we, I don't think it's so urgent that we need to backport it because truly there is no Java change whatsoever. It's no imports change, nothing at all changed in the Java code. It's It was purely a change to build scripts. Okay. So that means I can close the issue. Uh, may I ask um, you just to Let me close this? it. Let me yes. make the comment and close it because I think it's, I started it, I opened it. It's it's very reasonable that I should be the one the, who's responsible. The definition, of the, of the definition of done also includes uh, my last cleanup. So oh, the, good. we need to, both of us comment what was done. So you have to confirm and the last one will close. Is that okay for you? Yes, that sounds great. Thanks. Um, is there any other question on the G Center part? None for me. So let's move to the next issue. Uh, migrating leftovers of public gates to IRM64. So we have a nice exhaustive list. I believe we weren't able to work on I this. I was lazy enough to be on holidays, yes. <laughs> exactly. Damn people on <laughs> holidays at Christmas and New Year's Eve. Oh, nah. <laughs> Uh, which means nothing to report here. Stefan, do you feel you should be you are okay to start working on this next week? Uh, yes, what do you think? And partially. Um, two weeks oh. ago, no, three weeks ago, we said, oh, eventually we could share the burden. I didn't have time, but if it's okay for you, we can just uh, spread the all the services between you and I, if it's okay for you. Um, each of them need need migration, so so they will all need some work to be done. We need to convert the. Um, I, the I don't um, say what we have to do. I oh. say, are you okay? Oh, yeah, we can we, we can share the, the burden, of course. Exactly. Take whatever uh, you want. You take <laughs> one. I take one. That that's what I meant. No, no, no. Okay I you? take one. You take two. Of course. Yes. Yes. Of course. <laughs> mm. But if I take two, you have to write the update CLI for changing expiry, expiry dates of the credentials. Uh, that will be my pleasure. <laughs> Bruno will help me out. Bruno, run for your life. <laughs> Nothing to report. Uh, workload to be spread across team members along the way. So we keep that issue on the next milestone. Um, export download mirror list to a textual representation. Can you rem do you remind where where were we on this one, Stefan? Yeah, we just have the skeleton we need now. I need now. We need to to improve the content of what we we put in the now. We need to convert to a JSON and not a text file, and mm -hmm. to improve the the content and do a little script to um, to dig on the, on the URL to get those IPs. 
Okay, so next milestone, but low priority. Is that okay for you? Yeah, I'm not sure I will manage to, to take my hand in there if it's low priority. Okay. But the, the skeleton is done. We have a textual representation. Need to convert to JSON. Low priority. Um, next issue is on me. I thought uh, I I should have been able to deploy this to production last week because I I would have wanted to take the opportunity of not a lot of workload even though I didn't had time to finish it. So that's something that should be planned. Um, ideally, I would want to do this uh, next Thursday this week, if it's OK for everyone, which involves eventually slow download mirror during at least one to four hours after the operation, time for the mirror for all being scanned, and the leftover of the former service to be cleaned up. And of course, if I make a mistake during the migration, that could result on get Jenkins IO being available or responding errors to downloads. Is there any objection if I plan this for Thursday morning my time? No objections from me. No neighbor too. Thursday morning or January 2024. At Paris time. Yes, I will add it on status Jenkins, are you? Uh, tune not pull size. That issue is almost done. Uh, as mentioned before Christmas, after a, a thoughtful review from Stefan and Hai, we need to start packing up some services running on the the Intel not pool on the public cluster. In order to do so, based on the metrics, we saw we could the nominal usage of on memory and CPU resources is clearly lower than the resource and limit we currently use. So that's the initial rule of thumb when you, you want a linear scaling system. In that case, we can start packing up, which means decreasing the resource requests so that the Kubernetes scheduler should be able to pack more services on less nodes. And so we will decrease the cost of these nodes because right now we have five small nodes and we should be able to run everything on three nodes. That's the goal of that wall issue, to decrease the costs of the nodes on that cluster. Um, the limit will be kept at the same because we, we need to put a upper bound that will kill the container if they use way more than usual. This should be quite easy, but I didn't have time during the holidays, of course. So same, nothing to report uh, to do tomorrow. Wednesday, Wednesday, uh, 3rd January. Any objection? because I will need to open a status for the services impacted by that change. Okay, Stefan, can I let you report on infra CI Jenkins IO using RM64? Yes, can you open the, the, the issue for me too? Yes, because I, I did comment this morning with you, oh, by the way. And um, yes, I'm, in order to use those um, ARM node pool, I, we choose to, to add the tools we need on the all-in-one image of the agent. So I, I installed uh, the, the tools that we use for Helm and L file to, uh, to the, the new tag 144.0. It's been published this morning. I need to put that in production. It's not yet in production. It's just available. And then we will be able to start uh, changing the pipelines to start using that new image on ARM64. And um, we did list all the repository we are using right now with Terraform to use that those new tools on that, that uh, new version of the agent. So it's a it's, uh, work uh, in progress. Mm -hmm. Nice. Is there any question? 
Okay, so we don't know in advance, we haven't listed exhaustively all the jobs that are using uh, Intel agents yet, but these two are the two biggest that we use. So let's see how it behaves if we're able to use RM64 for that, because maybe we are not. And once these two are done, I will let you, Stefan, continue tracking other uh, container builds that will use other uh, non-IRM64 images. Yes. OK. Um, uh, so uh, Docker and file ready to be replaced by all in one. Kubernetes management is the next target for RM64 agent. Then all Terraform agent involves a shared library change. Okay. Thanks for the report. Any question? Okay, so next one. Uh, renewing DigitalOcean sponsorship for 2024. So as uh, thanks for the work of Hervé last month, we were able to have our uh, sponsorship renewed by DigitalOcean. Uh, they were waiting for January to start. We contacted them earlier today, just to be sure we don't run out of credits. So as mentioned earlier in this meeting, we still have almost two weeks of credits left today. Uh, and they answer promptly saying, oh, we are going to apply it today or eventually tomorrow. And they proposed even 20K instead of 9, 18K. Uh, but that means we won't be able to ask for additional credit until the end of the year, of course, mm -hmm. because in fact, we consume 18K and 8.4 additional K last month, last year. So we did a bit more than expected, and they will want to stay at 20K max for open source project, which makes sense. That's already a lot. That covers way more than what we need today, because these additional credits were due to issues and CI Jenkins IO that consume almost 8K in two months that were unexpected. Now we control this. We are following this carefully, so that should, that will, should not happen anymore. So that's that's good news for us. As a reminder, that will sustain Archive Jenkins IO uh, bandwidth downloads and machine. So that's a really, really good news. So thanks, Hervé, and all our thanks to DigitalOcean. I believe we can start thinking about the blog post one to thank them or something, do something eventually, because that's really helpful. Renewed our sponsorship for 2024, 20K credits should be applied today or tomorrow to our account. We have two weeks of credits left until then. So I we will close this issue once the credit will be applied on the account. Is that okay for the definition of done? Cool. Uh, next issue for Stefan, Ghost version tracking. Can you give a give us a heads up on this one? Uh, yes, I did the, the Windows part before the, the holidays and I need now to um, uh, do the merging, the um, factoring between Linux and Windows for the common stuff and, mm -hmm. and rework all the update CLI uh, matching those ghosts. Those ghosts, sorry. Command tests. Check all That's a, key um, dependencies. That's a back uh, task. Low priority. Cool. Yes. Thanks. Is there any question? Thanks for okay. your help. No problem. Next step, uh, replacing Blob Xfer by AZ copy. So the common line we use on multiple areas on the update center, crawler, and other tools uh, use Blob Xfer 
a, com a, a old Python command line to copy data to the file storage using storage account and object storage on Azure. But that tool hasn't been updated since 2021. So it's time for us to switch from that tool to a new one named AZ copy and recommended by Microsoft. The AZ command line does not allow to copy objects as we would want. And the AZ copy. AZ copy has been uh, used extensively by Hervé when he, when he shaped the proof of concept for the new update center. And it looks like it's working very well. Uh, that's also used by the crawler, as we mentioned earlier today. Uh, that means we should be able to use it everywhere. The status right now is that Hervé was, is currently fighting the, the SAS token. We are The goal is to have a secure setup where we can revoke the token at any moment, whatever method, and eventually have expired, expired date. We already have one crawler, so that should be easy, but Hervé was trying to, uh, to have a fine tune grain and really tune system. Uh, looks like we can use storage accounts and then in the future eventually use identity management, meaning the virtual machine don't need even a token. Uh, I have mixed feeling about that kind of setup though, but uh, that's a different story. Because if there is a takeover somewhere on Azure system, then that means we are doomed. So and we need both of them. Yeah, the token is uh, is dangerous because we need to rotate it. So at the moment, we need a system where it's put in clear for a few minutes until we have applied it. That's the danger. So if there is a takeover of the machine of one of the administrator, that can be dangerous. But in the case of uh, the identity management, that means any other job running on same virtual machine yeah. will be able to take over. So for some jobs, it's OK, such as the crawler, because the crawler only use ephemeral agents. But for the update center, that can be a problem, because the update center use a permanent agent. So that means if you have access to any of the job of trusted CI, you could get the access. Maybe it's affordable, maybe not, I don't know. But that's something to be to take care. Um, so right now, nothing to report. I remember that um, Hervé did some stuff before the early days, but I don't remember which one. It's, there is no command. So I propose that we put this as nothing to report and move it to next milestone. And Hervé will take care of that when he will be back. Is that okay for you? Initially, we discussed about me taking over here, but since there we have the crawler issues, and since the crawler issues are related on the ACS token that Hervé is currently digging. My proposal is that I focus on fixing the crawler and adding restriction on the crawler itself so that Hervé could cherry pick the knowledge and apply it here. Any objection? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. Nothing to report. Holidays. Uh, moving to two milestones. Early days for RV. Um, currently focusing on fixing and restricting. Is there any question on the ACA sport? So knowledge can be cherry picked in this topic. Okay, so then moving to the update center, the new update center system. Uh, a few things to update. So as a reminder, we still need to battle test this in, uh, from the point of view of performances. So performance test to be run. So we need to to, to spin up an injector system that will inject requests at a high load, on different load, to see when does the system break. Uh, second, we need to restrict the token used by trusted CI for the ACS, just what I mentioned earlier. And finally, we need to wait uh, for a review from the Jenkins security team on the update center pull request by Hervé. 
Um, minor update as part of the crawler, I saw that there were two credentials with the same value. One was the full URL, while the other was only the query string. The query string is currently used by Hervé's pull request and the crawler. And I think the URL, based on what I see on the issue, the URL token uh, did, wasn't required anymore. It was too too much painful to be used, and Hervé worked a lot on only using the query string. So I've removed the the, the credential to be sure we don't uh, we don't do any human error since it's all managed manually for now, and uh, I've updated the update center job to man to use the new one because we didn't test the update center since three months that could explain the presence of that credential. The update center did not fail after that change, so we are all okay there. That will ease Hervé's life when he will be back. So for now, we won't be able to work on this one because we need the Hervé and fixing the crawler. So if no one object, I propose to move in two milestones. Is that okay for everyone? Accept minor credential cleanup. Okay. Uh, Mark, I moved this one as the last one. Uh, you install it. It's a request to install the new coverage pages extension plugin on CI Jenkins mm -hmm. Um I'm sure if we search, we might see a rotting issue or a closed issue in our help desk about removing the embeddable build status on CI Jenkins IO at least one year ago. Um, because we were wondering if it wasn't causing performance issue and outbound the bandwidth download from CI Jenkins IO. Mm, okay. Uh, let me search for embeddable. Maybe it's closed. I'm searching for this one and consider removing embeddable build status plugin. So that issue was initially opened by Daniel. The reason was the plugin wasn't actively maintained. So that could that wasn't sustainable. Um, we removed it from other instances, but for CI Jenkins IO, if I remember correctly, we were breaking things. Don't, uh, then the plugin was updated, despite the, uh, in order to fix the CVEs. And okay, now someone in that room and Darin pop. Uh, um, okay. So Mark, you and Darin, you adopted the plugin, right? We did, and and I made a. Uh, what I thought was a relatively significant performance fix as an early adoption change. Cool. So there was there was some particular code that I looked at and was horrified. And when I'm horrified by code, <laughs> that's a really bad sign. It's like, oh <laughs> my so sakes, bad. what is that doing? And so that horror has been resolved and released in the in the plugin. I don't know that ci.jenkins.io would ever have encountered that horror. It was just a terror for me. It was whoa, how could this code possibly have considered as acceptable in something as accessed as frequently as embeddable build status? Okay. So which means uh, I wanted your advice and security advice on that topic. And I but think, from, I think yeah. security is still the right thing to ask because I may have missed something. I think the embeddable build status plugin is okay now to stay on mm -hmm. CI Jenkins though, unless we've got data that says it's causing an undue load. That that part I can't answer, right? I've never done a data analysis to see see if it's if it's causing undue outbound bandwidth. I started checking the code, even though I won't have you high on checking performance issue. At least uh, the code is simple enough that if we if we do a thread dump, if we see CI Jenkins IO being slow, we do a thread dump, we will be able to immediately identify if it's there is some code stuck on that plugin. That one feels easy for me. So I don't mind the performance, but I just wanted to be double sure because I, um, my recollection was the embeddable status plugin should still be removed, but looks like it's closed. 
So I'm not, should we proceed and ask asynchronously the GenSec team for a care a thoughtful review? I, I think we should. I, I I think it's good to ask GenSec before we deploy a new plugin to ci.jenkins.io. Just that's a really good pattern for us. They're they're a good safeguard. Okay, so I will commence the issue, uh, and I will mention people. It's just that I know the GenSec team is uh, always busy and I would prefer having them checking on the update center than this one. Mm. Uh, because the risk in terms of security for CI Jenkins you are not that much. We don't have a lot of credential that could be taken over here. And, and, and that's a fair point. We might, we may next week decide we're going to stop waiting for GenSec. We've, we've assessed it ourselves. I think that's okay. If we give them a fixed period and say, hey, if they haven't been able to to review it, we accept that. And the code is simple, right? This is yep. this is really not a, a, a very involved plugin. That's why if it's okay for you, I propose since that issue is closed, I will mention it's closed because it has been adopted. Because I, I remember embeddable build status had security issue. That's all I remember. And right. now we just see, saw together that you adopted. So for me, it removed what uh, was a blocker for me. So if it's okay for everyone, I schedule that issue to the new milestone. We proceed for installing that because we have a contributor who look really uh, careful and is helping us. Uh, so I will prefer taking the risk on CI Jenkins IO given it's a low risk and now uh, due to what we said. We still mention the Jenkins security team to say A for information, we have installed that, so we explain uh, how we mm. adjusted that risk. And we see if you have time or a point of view on this, please look at it. And if you don't answer, no problem. Do you think it's okay? Do you think that's a yes, proper balance? Yes, I think that's for very reasonable. Absolutely. It's okay. the adding the coverage plugin is not significantly increasing the threat, the, the risk profile of ci.jenkins.io, right? I think you've described it very well. It's if embeddable build status has some unresolved performance problem, it still has that, whether we add coverage or not. Okay, so risk versus benefits. Still pinging async, low priority, the gen sec team. For the sake of sharing, okay. Is that okay for everyone? Cool. Um, so 96. Okay, we still have a lot of issue. I'm sorry, that was holidays. I've put some issues on the next milestone and we need to check them. Uh, I will order priority based on what we said. First one, top priority, the DNS domain name expires in 25 days. Uh, Mark. Uh we can close it. Oh, it has been renewed. It has been renewed. Just cool. close it. It's and and that was the that was the scenario we envisioned, right? I think when it hits 28 days, Tyler's renewal happens and so confirm that it is renewed. Okay. May I ask you to close it with a message yes. showing how will do, do you check for this that will be easier for next time. Mhm. Mm cool. Um, I'm still keeping it on the next milestone and it will be closed immediately. Yes. Great. Um, thanks, Mark. Uh, we have a request by Alex about approving Elementio GitHub integration for the repository permission updater. Um, that's a good idea useful i'm not sure about the permission that it gives so that need to be read carefully because i understand the needs but the if you see on my screen oh review requests so it's only one repository that's the good thing but it can oh read access Okay, and read and write access to actions, issues, and pull request. So it's really okay. So that should be okay. It's, it shouldn't be able to change code. So that one, does it look good for everyone? Because repository permission updater, as, as a reminder, 
once a pull request on the code on the main branch is merged, that will effectively grant access to repositories and plugins. So that's a sensitive repository. Even though I was scared this morning because I, I saw the right, but in fact, it's on the action issue on pull request. So it's for the bot to have the bot opening pull requests. So that doesn't remove any human validation. So that looks really good. So that one is removed and I'm gonna approve it. Okay. Any question on that, that one? Okay. Then uh, add not my fault to Jenkins admin group. Uh, so he need a administration, administrative access to CI Jenkins IO, which is okay. Uh, it's just to be sure, I need to check the permission granted by Jenkins dash admins group. I know um, what I saw when I granted access to Chris Turn to release CI, I realized that yeah, it's a myth for this group. So maybe we need to plan and carefully check. So the goal here is to have Alex only having administrative access to CI Jenkins. So he cannot be admin or top level admin, only admin on CI Jenkins. That's really important, not because we don't trust Alex, but it's just to avoid having too much permission to everyone. Any question on this one? My proposal, Stefan, is that we will have to pair on this one just to see the state of the non-art and see what could be done and where the where are the real configurations so we can see the source of truth for this and we can update that issue as soon as possible and then start planning for cleaning up things. Is that okay for you? Yeah, I remember we had, we had an eye already a few months ago that that was not easy. Cool. So no more triage. A uh, new issue I opened following uh, Daniel uh, message. Looks like he's having an issue to download data on Uplink. I was able to reproduce the issue and had a, and see a new error. Uh, so thanks survey, even though being in holidays, helped me on filtering out the errors. So that one is the error, but my knowledge stops here. Even though we have the PG toasts, mention that makes me think that uh, Daniel is right. There might be an issue with the database, but I don't know which one. So we will need to check the database on Azure side and eventually the code. I have no idea how Hub, Uplink and JavaScript work, so that might be a, a long one. Anyone with that knowledge is welcome to help. I'm having a hard time, Mark, to evaluate the priority of this. It's really... Uh, yeah, I, I I don't I I I agree that I think it's low priority. I I know yep. Daniel, it's uncomfortable to say it's low priority, but I don't think that this is nearly as valuable to the Jenkins project as our work on the updates.jenkins.io migration. Right. So yep. okay. for me, I I wish I wish it were different, but but the reality is, if we even if we lost the telemetry data and had to redo it in, entirely, it would still be less valuable than the cost savings we're trying to achieve with updates.jenkins.io. Okay, thanks for the pointer. So low priority on this one now. For... Yeah, now I'm open to others tell, telling me I'm wrong, but I I think in terms of the Jenkins project, the telemetry data is is just not nearly as valuable as us saving costs on, on updates.jenkins.io hosting. Okay, uh, I, I think that makes sense and that's clear for me. So I, I, I agree. Uh, what do we have? Got coverage, we covered it. Scroll, scroll build, we covered it. Export, never least, we covered it. CI Jenkins IO install, so I need to comment it, but that means we remove the triage message. Do we have new issues? My first ex Jenkins, what? Okay, so that one need to be checked. I believe they will never answer, but still we haven't answered, so we need to check. Eventually there might be so a error message. The email looks... Hmm, 
on this one, I actually did an initial check and I realized there's a there's a technique you use, Damien, that I do not use and I'm not sure I know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So I've seen you in the past tell users, hey, I see that you've you've got this account created and it's really there and it matches this username and the email matches. But then you were able to tell them, but we sent you an email message and I can't check that. Oh. Would it have been okay if I had just done a password reset for this user myself? Or, oh. or... in that case, that won't work because if the pro uh, d depends, we have to check first the error on Datadog. You can, everyone here can do it. Mm. Um, on Datadog, we search uh, on the log issue. Um, we, we can do it after the meeting. Uh, once we will stop the recording, I can show you the pointer. And the goal is to check the error that Akunta publication saw when uh, that person tried. Ah, uh, most okay, of so... the time, they report the email could not be sent or no error at all, which means the error is on the SMTP server. Then we have to move, I, I never remember it's Mailgun or whatever we use here. We can uh, log in to the API and start checking the errors and the errors are, are clearly shown. Uh, as uh, okay, uh, the SMTP failed, the email doesn't exist, the, the EMAP server uh, receiving failed or whatever. Does it make sense? Yes. So that one need to be to be checked. So removing triage here and adding it to the milestone. Okay, now um, we weren't sure about the priority of that one. That's why we still have the triage uh because right now i've had it elements we saw the error the java ip space but i have no idea how it works now we might need help from someone with knowledge on java um i'm not really sure uh, we can check the metrics that might be something on the infra side but it's it's not easy to understand what the problem could be I'm not sure if it was a container or virtual machine. Maybe we can check the name looks like a container. But for me, Java Ip space is word in the context of a container. We need to see if there was a OM kill on the pod side because Ip space mean you are trying to allocate way more memory than expected. Isn't that correct? Yeah, and I, I don't know the interactions, but I think... I, uh, this one, the, the current behavior is we work around it by pressing retry, right? So, so it's, it, it still happens. I've, I saw it mm -hmm. within the last 48 hours, but it's an easy, easy thing to resolve or it's an easy thing to work around. It's, it's not free. We do another run and see if, and, and the next run oftentimes passes. Okay, it's funny because so, it should it should have this exact same amount yeah, of memory and that's right, really right. Weird. That, that, and, and that's that's what makes this one at least for me odd and surprising. Like, really? Okay, I I ran I did the same thing with the same code and this time it didn't get an out of memory or it didn't get a it and, didn't and give this I, message. If I remember correctly, the, the Java heap is set at the at the launch of Java and you set the the property so it's not it's not Changing yeah. with with the and I assume this is an OOM kill somehow, right? This is a message coming from an out of memory kill, but but again, I don't know. I, I agree with Damien. This mm. since it's Maven reporting the IP, uh, the Java IP space that mm -hmm. could be a child process spawned mm. by Maven. The child process receive an exit code one one three nine. I'm I'm not completely sure because the wall agent process and its child should be killed hierarchically. Uh, the whole container should be killed by the OM error. Oh, yeah. ah, okay. Because the kernel will take the, the whole container uh, C group part and will kill it globally and it will restore it. Uh, so we need to check if it's OM killed. If not, then check the memory metric, memory usage metrics. Uh, check if GDK21 as word behavior inside container limit request. Um, uh, 
check which cluster was used. Is there a failing correlation? That could be, for instance, all yeah. failure are on DigitalOcean or all failure are yeah, on right. Amazon to pinpoint something with AWS or DO. Okay. Yeah, but that we need to be really... careful because that if if they are all running in the in the same that 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 uh, and and they are on error that can drive us to that, but that doesn't make it sure. Yes, but since we can... Yeah, we got the name. Retrieve. We got all the data in Datadog. Exactly. We should be able, using Datadog, to pinpoint one or the other yeah. cluster. Thank you, Datadog. Um, and also, um, try to run on a VM agent instead of container to see if it disappear. Because yeah, the virtual machines have way more memory. Yes, but if it work on a virtual machine, that means there is something related to the memory allocation with the container. There if is, it fails, it's based on, so, so there is a problem with memory. Yes, but you don't know if you don't have the same on a virtual machine. So then you can pinpoint on GDK21 or the Maven configuration yeah. used to spin up child process, Java processes. While there, we don't know, maybe it's only the container yeah, setup. You're right, I can pinpoint the problem. Okay, so it's not a blocker, but that's really annoying. Is my understanding and statement correct, Mark? Yes. Okay. Not a blocker. Cool. So I believe we've covered all the new issues. So we have new things here DNS, G Center. Yep, everything is covered on my side. Do you have other. Uh, uh, the the removing of the plugin will not be as easy as you thought. We got a message from I forgot who, and there is a dependency for with the old uh, plugin. Mm, okay. Really? I thought I I had no trouble removing it. Interesting. I don't. Where do you see message in uh, one of the pull with, requests? Yes. Oh, oh, well, we should get rid of Cobertura as well. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Do we need Cobertura on InfraCI? I, My guess is no. Not. No, I, I don't I know why we would have merge, Cobertura on I did Infra merge CI. already on Infra for the for the weekly. that, And I mm -hmm. saw that after. So if yeah. we got Cobertura, we will see the, the failure. And so, I have the same question for release CI. Do we need the code coverage API? Well, we we I think we I I really like having the same set of plugins, mul and and the coverage is the modern modern thing. I like that a bunch. I've been I've been as a Java developer really pleased with this particular thing. On a recent change I made to Jenkins Core, it mattered a bunch that this this facility was available. That coverage reporting does such a good job in 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 Jenkins. It's really cool. So, okay. uh, but. But now, do we need it on release CI? Maybe not. I, it just, yeah. For me, on ci.jenkins.io, I definitely need it. Yeah, on CI, there is no problem on that area. That's weird because on CI, Jenkins, I, I didn't see it reinstalled after restart. Well, and I think it's not installed at all. Cobertura? I don't think so. I don't know why it would be. It's not. Yeah, so it's not on ci.jenkins.io. Okay, so... so that's why it's working nice. Okay, let's remove Cobertura then everywhere since I don't see why we would need it. Yeah, there and and Uli Hoffner regularly asks that question. I he he notes that look, the other plugins already provide now provide the features that Cobertura plugin provided, and they actually do a better job of it. Warnings NG now handles mm -hmm. handles Cobertura very nicely. So if it's okay for everyone, let's remove Cobertura as part of this pull request. Stefan, you are allowed to push on my pull request, of course, for this one. If it's I'm okay sorry, I did merge already the, the, your, your pull request on the other. Uh, yeah, no problem. The, so the... you can open a second sub, subsequent. Mm. Is that okay for you? And I will take yes. care of reporting on the main issue. Is that okay? So we share Thank the you. burden. Cool. Perfect. And then we'll see as 
pointed out by uh, by Alex, once we will deploy the new images without Cobertura and with the new coverage plugin instead of code coverage, we will see if we still have the code coverage plugin installed. So we might need to, to do manual operation. Is that okay for you? Yes. We'll have to check. Yes. Okay. Now, while we're talking about this coverage item, mm -hmm. on ci.jenkins.io, there is old data from the previous coverage plugin that is being discarded if I press the, the discard old data button. So manage yes. old data. Go for uh, it. I see no reason for us to keep that old data. Uh, it probably would have been better if if there was okay. Oh. And I've so I've clicked the discard unreadable data button. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while because there's a lot of it. Yep. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Okay. I don't have any other actions. Is there something else you want to mention or discuss? Okay, no. So then let's get back to our normal walking day. Hope every, everything, everyone is doing okay. See you next week. I'm stopping recording of my Bye -bye. screen. Bye-bye.